once again, Shalom Rastafari. We were slightly uh, interrupted um, and just had to uh, reset up this particular recording and um, teaching. So we're going to continue where we were. So let us um, continue with um, First Thessalonians. Now, this is all connected with the Rosh Hashanah. And once again, Shana Tova, Shana Toba, and there are other very important um, greetings for this particular um, High Holy Day, which we call this the Yom Teruah and the Zikaron Teruah, or the Day of Trumpets, as well as the remembrance by the remembrance of trumpets and connected with the blowing of the shofar. Now, where we are continuing from the last, um, the last part of this particular message, we were in First Thessalonians. Now, let us uh, just bring this up. It was in uh, First um, Thessalonians, and we're speaking on the Yamim Anorayim. This is one of the main areas that we would like to address: the Yamim Anorayim, and the Yamim Anorayim is the days of awe and the ten days of awe. And what we're seeing by understanding from the Hebraic sense, we are now better able to interpret the New Testament or the Christian or the Messianic sense, you know, saying that we have in the New Testament. Now, here in First Thessalonians, we were at First Thessalonians for our second reference to Trump and, and Trumpet, and it Start from, we're going to go return to where we were, verse 13, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, which concerns the model halakha, the model akahed, the model walk, as well as the mitmanan tesfa, or the, the mitmanan, the faithful, the hope of the faithful, the hope of the admittance, that those who are, are faithful and true. We don't like to use the word belayeth. In, it's a bad translation of the Mammon that is found in the Hebrew and the Ethiopic and even the Pistis that's found in the Greek of the Septuagint is much better than the word Belaiz that um, is used in the Western sense. So if you hear us say um, the faithful or the, the admitters of truth or those who admit the truth of the Father and the Son in that sense, then we are speaking of the mitmanon, but in your Bibles, or, or others might say it as believer or believer. Now, verse 13 says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, Wendemoch. I don't want you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Now, an important point here concerning those who had fallen asleep. It's speaking about those who had died. This is something that we need to understand. It's speaking about those who were mitmanat, those who were faithful, who had passed on. Even we as Aras de Fari know that we have many of our brethren as well as sisterin who have passed, who have in the worldly sense died, but in the Christian, Christian, and Messianic sense, we do not refer to them to have died because we know there's a lot of walking, living dead. You know, they have fallen asleep or they have gone to rest, they have gone to sleep. You understand? Know this is the way the scriptures, this is the way the family of God in Christ refers to our loved ones of the faith who have passed on or who are from a worldly perspective, dead, we say they are asleep. And I think that's where we were um, before the, the previous recording had, had um, ended. And we, we want to pick up here and continue with this uh, Yom Teruah Rosh Hashanah Ras Hasana teaching. And once again, Shana Tova, Shana Toba. Good year or Melkam Adisamet. Melkam Ibra Ibrahistawi Adisamet. 
Happy Hebrew New Year. Now, with that verse 13, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant. I don't want you ignorant, Hawaii Apollos is saying, concerning them which are asleep, that you that ye sorrow not, that we don't sorrow because Burhana Salase is asleep. We don't sorrow because Jacob Miller and Peter Peter Tosh is asleep. We don't sorrow because Garnet Silk is asleep or, or the sister I think her name is Puma Puma Jones from Black Uhuru that that she is asleep and there's there's so many more you understand know, of our brothers and sisters who have gone on, you understand, know, to the spirit world. You know, and yes the spirit world is true. We're not talking about so called spooks, but then spook the real spook was the black man to begin with. So that's a whole other lecture right there and a whole other teaching. But we're not talking about a spook God when we speak about spirit. You know, this. So, Hawaii Paulos, he's saying to the brethren that he don't want them to be ignorant, not knowing, not having gnosis, not having that acquaintance with the truth. Concerning those, concerning those who are asleep, those from a worldly perspective who have died, that ye sorrow not, that we sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Those who don't have the God and the Father of our Lord and Savior, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, they don't have any hope. Therefore, maybe for them it is right to sorrow. You understand? Especially in connection with the mystir or the mystery of this ten days of awe, or the yamima norayim that we are to touch on. Verse 14 says, For if we, King James says, believe, we say, have faith, admit, have faithful admittance of the truth, that Yeshua, that Jesus, died and rose again, even so them which also, even so them also which sleep in Yeshua, those who sleep in Jesus, will Ha Elohim Hashem Baruch Hu bring with him. Verse 15. For this we say to you, for this we say to you, by the word of Adonai, by the word of the Lord Kurios, Gita, that we which are alive and remain to the coming of Adonai. And this is interesting that this is that this is said here in Thessalonians. He's saying that there are some who lay off the, 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 the body, the carbon organic structure. You understand, or some who are martyred even. It's not their will, but it is the will that they sleep with Yeshua. Hawaii Apollo is saying, for this I and I is saying to, to the item and to you all, by the word. He's saying, I'm saying this not because by my own opinion. He's saying, I'm saying this by the word. By the word of the oracle of Adonai, by the oracle of Adonai, by the word of Adonai, uh, the word of Gita, the word of Kurios, the word of the Master, that we, I and I, which are alive and remain to the coming of Adonai, shall not prevent or precede. You looked it up in the skull field, looked at W next to prevent in the margin, you find the word precede. We shall not precede them which are asleep. So those who have passed forward, for example, we say Barana Salase. We will not precede Barana Salase. We're not going to precede or go before. They are already before us. You understand? Because they have already slept and they sleep with Adonai. They sleep with the Master, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 16 says, For Adonai himself, the Lord himself, the Master himself, 
shall descend from heaven, from the Shammai, from the Shammayim, with a shout, with the voice of the Lik Emelaik, the voice of the archangel, and with the trump, with the trump of Ha Elohim, Baruchu, with the trump of God. And the Mutan, the dead, those who are dead, the Moshiach, those who are dead, the Christos, in Christ, the anointed, shall rise first. So those who have already died with admittance, with imnet, the subjective, or on the objective of the Amen, because Christos, our black Lord and Savior, the Adonai, the Master, He is the Amen. He is the objective, the Imnet that we have. You see, when you study the etymology of the two words, Amen and Imnet, and when you understand the Mishtir or the science, the spiritual science behind it, the Gnosis behind it, the knowledge behind it, you recognize that Christ is the Amen. Out of Egypt, even, if you please. If they worshipped the Amen in truth, it was truly Christ. It was truly the Moshiach, Yehoshua, Yehovah. And the subjective is the imnet that we have. So that he is the faithful. And that which we have, that faith, that, that admittance according to our faith. Now something is very interesting concerning the word faith. Because we will find Christ saying, Christos, the Moshiach, saying to the disciples, O ye of little faith. And he would say of certain ones, O ye of, O such as, I have not seen such faith among Kol Israel, Yisrael, among Kol Israel, I have not seen such faith concerning the Roman centurion. Because the Roman centurion said, you don't have to come to my house. If you say it, I know it's true. If you say it, so be it. It comes to pass. Notice that faith. Many of us are like those who have to see things. We have, not we, but modern people have invented this idea, which is another religion. It's called seeing is believing. In other words, if they see it, they can admit in it. This means that they are spiritually blind because this word says we don't, we walk by faith, not by sight. So that we don't walk by sight, we walk by admittance. We walk by bemnet. So this is very important. Now, at this point where it says that the, the mutan or the dead in the Moshiach, right, the dead in the Christos, they will rise first. They, they, they are the first resurrection. They are the first resurrection. And brothers and sisters, this is very real. You understand? And I and I is real. I and I is the true Israel. Now, verse 17, which needs to be connected with this theme. Then it says, we, I and I, which are alive. In other words, when this dispensation is fulfilled. And the way it seems, and we say it seems, the way it seems, based on our study of the, the word and the dispensation and the ages and, 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 and the, current, the current of the present time, some of us will be alive. You know what I'm saying? Some of us will be alive, as it says right here, then we which are alive and remain. Notice that. Remember we were talking about um, um, the days of Noah and the pseudo-rapture? and the misinterpretation that many so-called nominal Christians have of the rapture, and where Christ says, uh, says that, and one shall be taken and one shall be left. Ask most of your Christian friends or people you know, or even ask yourself, which one do you want to be, according to that parable in that verbal hieroglyphic, really, that's understanding the mystery, the mystery of it, in Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, Christ gives a verbal hieroglyphic or a parable, a simile, where he says that one, there should be two in the field, one should be taken and one should be left. There should be two here and one should be taken and one should be left. I've heard Christians, I grew up experiencing a black church, you know, experiencing black 
church. And, and there's some things that the black church has that many other churches don't have. In fact, they call the black church and the black people soul people. And that's one thing that black folks have. Many others are learning that. And even through the spiritual or the soul music or the gospel music. But I've heard so many preachers preach and basically declare, you understand, that I want to be taken. I want to be one of those taken. But what they never recognize and what they never realize is that those who will be taken will be those who will be taken away with the flood of ungodliness or the ungodly waters. So when you check Matthew chapter 24, Mateus Wengel, and then you check that with your Johannes Arai or Revelation, where it talks about that there was a serpent that stood before the woman who was about ready to give birth and spit out this flood of waters, you understand, in order to wash away the woman. And then further in other areas of the scripture, you'll see that this is, all, this is all glimpses of the same vision. This is like different ways of describing the same vision. And there is a heavenly dimension to it. In fact, there's a Rastafari brother. Um, I don't want to do injustice to his name, but I've, I've seen some clips of the videos and he is speaking about 2012. And he is showing the connection with the, the heavens and the cosmology of the heavens. This is, what, this is all aspects of what one needs to know. In fact, what you will recognize if you haven't already, if you sincerely seek to study and to grow in the Word, and to really understand what the scripture is speaking about, it leads you into so many different disciplines. In other words, there's so many things that you learn by learning and studying the scripture. I mean, there is, there is science, there's history, there's art, there's music, there's philosophy, there's psychology, there's biology, there's medicine, all within the scriptures when it's properly and rightly divided and understood. Now, there's a lot of other subject matters as well. And when we ask, why do some people, you understand, they tend to have a group success, generally speaking. They may have a couple that fall between the cracks, as it were. But overall, they have a group success. And many of those that we find especially the so-called Jews, are like that. And a, a lot of that has to do with study of the Word. You understand? None who have truly and sincerely studied the Scriptures. Like it says, I've been young and now I'm old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You know, so something to think about. But in moving forward, it says, so then we which are alive and remain, that key is remain, remain, not taken away. One shall be taken and one shall be left. I and I hope to be the ones who will, will be left. You understand? You understand? Not those who are taken, but those who will be left. Because this now connects directly with what Hawaii Apollos is saying right here in First Thessalonians chapter 4 at verse 17. He's saying, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And this is the rapture part. This is the part that so many Christians have been misled in a lot of men and people fantasy. There's a lot of movies about the rapture and what's going to happen and so forth and so on. And many believe this to be gospel. They would do better to study the gospel and to study the Bible. Now, here it says to meet Adonai, to meet Adonai in the air, to meet him in the ether, to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with Adonai. Now, many Christians believe that we're going to be physically, see, in, in material Christianity, they believe that it's going to be a physical, kind of like, we are, like in the pictures, the Renaissance and other paintings of it. But when you put it into proper context and rightly divide the word of truth, you have to recognize it's not going to be 
physical, as they say, but more metaphysical or spiritual is the reality of this rapture. So is there a rapture? Yes. Is it the way that they say it, it is? No. So there's a rapture, but not the way that they make believe that it is. And as we've gone through this in a couple of teachings and studies, one can clearly see if they rightly divide the word of truth. But here in verse 18, which is the beautiful part of it, it says, Wherefore, wherefore, comfort, comfort one another. It now tells us to comfort one another with which words? These words. Comfort one another with these words. So, we see now, trumpet in two very, very interesting senses. One was from 1 Corinthians chapter 15:52, And the second is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, where it says, For Adonai himself, Gita Rasu shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump, with the trump of Ha Elohim, with the trump of God, and the dead in Moshiach, and the dead the Christos shall rise first. They are the Rishon. The Rishon, the Rishon, which is to say in the Hebrew, they are the first. They are the true Rises. You understand? That shall rise. So Shalom, Rastafari, and there's more to come. We're still going to touch on the Yamim Norayim, or the ten days, the days of awe. So get ready, my people. It's later than we all think. Shalom. Rastafari and Shana Tova.